Peace, love, and light. Welcome to First Eye Visions. My name is Q, and I'm here to do a general reading for my beloved Scorpios. I welcome anyone that may be new. I hope you stay a while. If you are new, I am also a Scorpio. I am empathic. I'm intuitive, and I am clairaudient. I do incorporate music into my readings. They tend to blend in beautifully. Right now, we have... Who is this? Playing says do child and this is uh the shy lights i believe who is this oh this is the five stair steps and this is called ooh child things are gonna get easier so for any of you scorpios we all know y'all have been going through that dark night of the soul journey so the divine is assuring you Things are about to get really easier for you. They're going to get smoother. Things are going to get, you know, um, you're going to see progress. You're going to see some movement. You know, if there was delays, if there was blockages, if you've been like waiting around, you know, or feeling like you've been waiting forever for, you know, some something to change in your life, I feel like things are going to be getting easier, especially, you know, being as though we're closing out uh, 2021. I can't believe this is about to be the end of this year. It feels like we just was in here saying Happy New Year to bring in 2021 and now it's closing out. So it's pretty, it's just, it's like, I'm, I'm anticipating it. I'm excited about it, but it's also like, you know, I'm the, the, the suspense of what 2022 is killing. Me. <laughs> it's like, you know, but it is a six universal year, so I do foresee a lot of balance, love coming in, a lot of oneness, wholeness, like, you know, a lot of self-care is what I'm picking up for that six universal year, you know, like really being in a safe space, a safe haven, you know, having balance, you know, having a sense of bal uh, balance in your life. And um, so we got a couple of cards that just literally flipped over in my hand. There's a bunch of them. We got containment, prosperity, responsibility, healer, security, magic, uh, feminine, ooh, autumn, um, respect, invocation, secret, stability, ethos, witch's hat, power, Spell, manifestation, scrying, mirror, shadow, astara, incubation, hearth, heart, uh, um, homecoming, magic circle, protection, and broomstick clearance. These are some powerful cards in and of itself. Like this just told the entire story. You know, I feel like you was contained at some point in time um, in a, you know, very dark shadow um you know, shadow period where you had to do a lot of, you know, soul searching and healing and growing, um, disconnecting from things, people, places that were not serving you. And I feel like, you know, that's another reason why things are going to get easier because you're no longer being contained, stuck, stagnant, confined, you know, in a relationship or situation that's not serving you. I feel like you had a lot of spiritual um, ancestors and guides that were kind of leading you out of, you know, some really toxic um, connections and situations. Those people were blocking your blessings. There's prosperity here opening up. So I do feel like you have a lot of abundance coming in, rewards, recognition. Um, and I feel like it's because you took your responsibility as that high priestess very serious. Um, I feel like you did your work. Like you didn't get sidetracked or distracted by people's um, tactics. Um, you didn't allow them to you know, stray you off your path. You know, there was a lot of secrets and we got with common, this is called testify. So I feel like, you know, your, your testimony, uh, the way that you were tested, the way that you were treated in these relationships that had you feeling confined is what led you to owning your power, you know, to, to finally realizing that you were powerful. But, you know, with this high priestess, this speaks to your own psychic abilities, your own ability to tap into the energy, your own ability to use discernment, uh, to speak language, to speak energetic language. You were able to create you know, like an energetic boundary to protect yourself, but you were also able to tap in to feel, you know, what people's intentions were. Um, you are 
absolutely healers, shamans, light workers. You know, this is a, a gift, a blessing that the divine has, you know, planted within you. This is in your DNA. This is a part of your makeup. And so many of you have awakened uh, during that dark night of the soul journey uh, to your actual gift, you know, to your gifts, to your talents, to your, your soul's mission here. Um, I feel like a lot of you discovered you were healers when you had to heal yourself from something very traumatic, something very painful, uh, you know, through deception and loss. I feel like it, you know, led you to owning and coming into, you know, who you truly were. Um, I feel like you also created those energetic boundaries to protect and block out any potential threats, any potential you know, attacks on you, on your family. I feel like you, you know, I'm hearing the word fortified. Um, and I feel like, you know, for many of you, um, these individuals are receiving karma. Those had, that were coming against you because I see someone who's just on their own spiritual journey, not really interfering with others' free wills or, you know, manipulating anyone's intention or trying to take away their free will. I feel like you was just on a journey to discover yourself, to heal yourself. And I feel like somewhere within those relationships, individuals were trying to manipulate your energy um, through gaslighting, lying, um, you know, words of spell, spells bind. So a lot of people don't realize like when you go around lying or spreading rumors, um, that's literally like, you know, entrapping someone in some sort of spell work because your spells, um, your words are spells and, and they will bind you. And so I feel like that too could be the reason why you felt contained or stuck, stagnant, uh, because of some of the, the, you know, um, some of the web of lies that others were spewing about you, but you created some sort of space, some safe space, safe haven where these individuals couldn't um, penetrate those walls because you created like a safe haven, like a sanctuary, a protective bubble. We have magic, candle magic. So many of you utilize those moon cycles, uh, started to work with uh, candles, uh, started to work with certain candle magic to break free from any of these attacks, um, to fortify the boundaries, um, you know, to ward off any negativity. Um, right now we have I'll Never Be the Same. Uh, this is by Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers. So you definitely can't return back to being asleep once you wake up um, from the illusion, from the delusion. I feel like, you know, there was a sense of aha, clarity, uh, some sort of epiphany. I feel like a lot of you started to pay attention to the way that your candles were burning and you started to see that you were absolutely being full on attacked. Um, you started to see the soot build up. Some of your candles were exploding and that lets you know that you were being worked on. Um, why? Because it was a lot of jealousy. You have a lot of secret haters, a lot of people who really like pay attention to everything it is that you do, but they do so privately. That's why I pick up like secret competition because someone who's like competing with you privately, you don't even know they exist, but they're obviously obsessed enough to stay tuned and to study you. So it's like, it's almost like a situation where they hate what they can't duplicate. So they hate the fact that you're this divine feminine. That could be, um, you know, you're very powerful. You're a master manifester. You're very attractive. Um, you're very creative. You may, uh, you know, have a business that's thriving, successful, and this is something that others are, you know, taking issue with. And it's because you've literally like stopped focusing on the problems and you started to focus more on, um, your own creative, um, you know, your own creativity. You started to pay attention to what it was that you uh, needed to do for yourself because I feel like for a long time these individuals distracted you with nonsense because you know you, where your attention goes energy flows so the more and attention you were given to them even if it was negative it was like it was feeding them you know they was feeding off of your positivity because the divine feminine is a, a lover a nurturer a natural born healer it's just in your uh, DNA to be loving and nurturing. It's in your DNA uh, to have that very healing um, element, you know. And I feel like, you know, for many of, you know, you, you definitely were like the matriarch 
uh, that head of household energy. With autumn, this is your season. So I do feel like during your solar return um, season, there was this sense of like taking your power back. It's almost like you were like, let the chips fall where they may. Um, you know, the autumn time is when the seasons change. So I feel like you started to change how you felt. You went from feeling like, you know, that this connection or these connections were something worth you know, fighting for, holding on to, to realizing that like whatever isn't growing is dead. Um, and I feel like you started to make the decision to move forward with your lives and, um, you know, to take your power back ultimately, because, you know, this is like autumn is, you know, that's your season. But as I said, that's when things start changing. So I feel there was a lot of change that took place during your solar return where you started to look at things more closely in terms of what's gonna what's gonna fit in like what are you you know what i'm saying because when you start reaching that place of like self mastery um you start assessing everything around you everyone every situation that you're involved in because you want to be a part of greatness so you're not going to have anything that's not worthy you know uh, around you. You're not going to just put up with any type of person being around you. You're going to be very particular about that. Um, right now we have James Brown. This is called Papa Don't Take No Mess. So I feel like for many of you all, you know, you started to look back at, you know, some of those uh, really strong alpha male um, energies, you know, that you, you know, that you grew up with. And you knew that, like, especially for the Maskins, you knew like, okay, my father would not you know, be pleased with me if I was out here being a womanizer because he taught me to be respectful of women. He taught me this or he taught me that. Or maybe some of you feminines knew like your fathers, um, you know, maybe you grew up with a father who was very protective of you. And now you understand why, uh, because you've been in, you know, some really toxic relationships where you felt like your free will and liberties were taken away from you uh, because you felt very confined, very, con you know, contained, stuck and stagnant in a codependent relationship. So now it's like you're, you're looking back like, you know, my father would not have it. You know, maybe your father has transitioned and, you know, returned to the spirit realm. And so it's like now you have had this aha moment and you woke up out of the, the, the funk, you know, that you was in to say, you know what, I'm going to do what's going to make my dad proud. I'm going to move forward with purpose, with, with truth, with clarity. Um, so now we have this pentacle. So I feel like a lot of y'all started to like work on growing your coins. Maybe you opened a business, started some sort of, um, you know, business portfolio where you said, you know what, let me see if I could get this grant to open up, you know, this, this damn juice bar, you know, let me get this grant to see if I could open up my salon or to open up my nail parlor. You know what I'm saying? Like you started to really focus on your career, your coins, your stability, your security, your family, your foundation. This is like you in the divine, the divine, like respects your, your, your grind, your focus, like whatever the energy is that you're putting into that. It's like, you're going to see a return on all of your investment of time, energy, money. It's like this, you're going to garner the respect of, you know, your peers because of the work that you've put in the divine is seen. Like you, you literally been working hard. Some of y'all been like, you know, working around the clock doing some sort of, um, you know, spell work as well. Like you've done money spells, money rituals, and that's bringing in a lot of coins, you know, great fortune. Um, here with ritual invocation, I do feel like you have um, a lot of people that could be trying to do, you know, because I was picking up on, you know, some sort of spell work being casted upon you, um, but you being protected, you having the protection of your ancestors. Um, these people are doing this privately, secretly. They could be going to practitioners trying to throw things at you. But with Papa Don't Take No Mess, I feel like the divine sees all, knows all, just like Mama Karma, uh, Mama um, Mama. Ma'at, she has everyone's address, so I do feel like, you know, whoever's been doing these these uh, ritualistic spells, trying to cast something negative, um, the divine papa is not going to take no mess. Like, they're going to reap what they sow, you know, so when you sow in good faith, you receive good karma. When you sow in bad faith, when you have negative intentions, 14, 14, that's 5, 5, that's 10, that's going to be the demise of you. You're going to fall by this very sword 
that you are waving against someone else. So somebody's definitely unaware, you know, they don't know the secret. It's like almost like, you know, when you have enemies that throw shit at you, they don't know how high in rank you are in the spirit realm. And so with Papa don't take no mess, it's like the divine is going to like come down on your enemies and they don't know this. They don't know that you have a secret uh, relationship connection with the divine, that the divine has like blissed you with all of, you know, the, 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 the tools necessary to, to get through this, to get out of this. I feel like a lot of you are in the craft. You're going to have stability. And this is something that they're very envious about as well. I feel you also have, um, somebody's like, um, somebody really feels love for you. And I feel like if they're in a relationship with another person, that person can feel that you have this hold on that person, that this person still holds on to you, whether um, there's this strong attraction or chemistry or synergy. It's like you are holding someone's heart. Like someone can't get you out of their head. And we got Come Close to Me playing by Common featuring Mary J. Blige. So this person really is like, you know, I feel like this person yearns, you know, there's a yearning um, and they want a new beginning. They do want a new beginning. They want stability. They want to work towards this. Maybe in the past, they, they was being more of a player or they was trying to breadcrumb you. They was trying to like string you along. They was doing all of the wrong things. And you was just like, you blocked that ass because you wasn't putting up with the games no more. And, and they're still holding on to this, even though there may not be any communication. I feel like they're wanting to reconcile, wanting to return. But I feel there's a bit of... Um, you know, of, of intimidation that's playing a factor. Yeah, because you're powerful. What did I say? These person, this person sees you as very powerful. They know you can read them inside and out. Like you're, you're very mysterious. You have this mystique about you. You know, there's this eccentric, um, energy, you know, this is like, you're very spiritual, very powerful, very wise. And I feel like this person knows, you know, like, you know, maybe they feel to some degree that you casted a spell on them, or maybe this person knows, um, that they rebelled against this connection, but they see you as very powerful. You all are very powerful, very strong in your craft. Like you really know, um, how to manifest master manifestors. You know, and you are manifesting some change in your life. I feel like you've done a lot of shadow work, you know, and this is why you have like developed, you know, this sense of, you know, power in the craft, strength, like knowledge, wisdom, you know, because you've had to apply it. You've had to utilize some of the, you know, some of these very um, secretive potions and spells, salut, to manifest your desired outcome. So it's like whatever you've been like visualizing, manifesting, you know, it's, it's, you know, in the incubation state. So that means that it's like behind the scenes, it's, it's, it's being worked on. It's being pruded, you know, it's like the divine is, is preparing it for you. Um, so you, it's just, it takes time. Good things take time to create, but this is also about creativity. Some of you uh, may find yourselves, you know, fertile. So be careful if you don't wish to give birth or have a baby because you're going to be very fertile. But I also feel like your creative juices are really just, you know, starting to develop in form and you have homecoming hearth. So I feel like there's someone returning into your lives or someone that is, um, you know, feels like your home. You know, maybe some of you all are really making sure that your home is your sanctuary. It's a safe haven, a safe place. Um, so you could be like doing some cleaning, decluttering. Um, I know there's this, um, you know, this, this saying that, you know, when you bring in the new year, you shouldn't have anything old. So you shouldn't have dirty clothes in your hamper. You shouldn't have old clothes that you haven't worn in years. Um, you should make sure to like declutter, to clean, to clear, to cleanse the energy within your household. So some of you could be, you know, making sure to, 
you know, to, to purify and cleanse and smudge your homes. Some of you all are so are returning home uh, to your hometowns. Maybe you're relocating back to your hometown just to be closer to family because of these past couple of years, these pandemics and all of this craziness going on. You felt like, okay, the best thing for me to do right now is to be closer to family. So there's a sense of like you returning home or maybe someone feels they want to return to you 1919. So this could be someone you had an ending with or someone who had uh, their own dark night of the soul journey because come close to me and then 1010, it's like someone wants to return turn. They want to start over. That's what that staff was. They want a new beginning. They want to start over. I feel like you have a lot of protection around you. Um, I feel that you are protected by your angels, your divine, because you have a purpose here. Um, I also feel like, you know, whoever comes into your life is also uh, being picked, in, you know, for you. Um, we have clearance. So all of the unsavory negative energies um, have been cleared out of your lives. This is also like what I was saying earlier about decluttering and clearing out any negative stagnant energy out of your home so as not to bring that energy into the new year. Um, so with clearance, some of you could literally be doing, you know, like sweeping, um, sprinkling some salt around the homes and then just sweeping it out of the door. Um, you know, some of you also could you know, have like a um, broom, a cinnamon broom kind of hanging right by the front door just to ward off any negative energies. But this is just what wanted to be expounded because all of these cards literally flew out and we got summer. So there's going to be new, um, new beginnings. You know, I see this card, you know, in the summertime, you know, that's when everything is like blossoming and growing. The weather is hotter. So I do feel like there's this sense of like, you know, having your strength back, uh, feeling more optimistic, more positive. Um, there's good news, good opportunities that's going to present themselves. Right now we have the Jacksons, um, and this is called Give Love on Christmas. So someone could return and give you love. Um, you know, somebody could also like give you an engagement ring, you know, so this, it could be something. So this card wanted to come out. So we have respect pentacle. So I feel like you're, you're going to be respected, um, within your, 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 you know, maybe you are already very respected at your, um, place of employment. I feel like your, your employers know that you work hard. Um, they see your, your, um, your level of effort, like you're very efficient, um, your skill set is effective. They see you as a team leader. They see you as a very positive um, asset to the team. Um, I feel like you know your money is absolutely going to match your your work, um, the work that you that you do. You're not going to feel like you're being, um, you know, you're not going to feel like you're being shortchanged. I feel like your money is going to get better. I feel like by Christmas, because it says give love on Christmas. So maybe some of you may see like a bonus. You know, this is just like that. Thank you. Or, you know, just an incentive from your employers to say like, thank you for a job well done. Something that was completely unexpected. Um, and I feel like this is going to be like wish fulfillment. And it's 2222 when I said that. So, you know, what is that? Two, four, six, eight. So that's eight. So wish fulfillment, you know, so your hard work is paying off. It's like the divine sees that you've been very like, you know, diligent, you know, that you've been very focused on the task at hand, on achieving your goals. Like you was up late night working on that goal, you know, and this, go this is going to garner you some level of respect. I feel like your money is, is absolutely like you're going to have a lot of um, stability and security in your life. But maybe some of y'all are going to feel bittersweet about that because your finances, your material um, aspect of your life is going to be like very good. But then your love life, your emotional fulfillment is is like absent because we got Fantasia bittersweet, you know. And with this autumn, I do feel like, you know, in during your solar return, I just feel like this strong energy that sort, Scorpios came into their power. You know, like you really just took your power back, owned your power. Um, so we have candles, magic. So that came back out. So many of you could make, cra um, you know, craft candles. Um, I feel like some of you all craft candles, but you also use candle magic. And I feel like a lot of you, if you pay attention to the way the um, 
the fire, the wick blows, it communicates. So I feel like the divine is telling me to tell y'all to look up candle magic meanings, like the meaning of the candles. So when you burn your candle, you don't just burn the candle and walk away. Like you, you candles are intentional. So it's like you got to put intention into the candle. You got to speak to your candle. You got to work with the candle. Um, you can't just light a candle and walk away and think it's going to just work magic. Um, so I feel like, you know, if some of you all are like scrying or scribing and then putting, you know, your intention under the candle and then you're like kind of meditating in front of it for five minutes and the, the, the wick is like bouncing, jumping, moving to the left, to the right, forward. And the divine is telling me strongly to tell you to like literally go look up the meanings because your candles are communicating to you, you know? And for some of you all, like, like I said, with this bittersweet, you know, I feel like you're going to receive news about your career, your finances. That's going to be like a sweet, um, you know, that's going to be like good news. It's unexpected. It's like, yes. But then in terms of like your love life, you may feel like, ugh, like when is it going to happen? See this alchemist? So you are the alchemist. You all are utilizing candle magic to manifest, to create potions and elixirs to life. Um, and with the alchemist, remember that eight, you know, it was two, 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 two on the clock. And so I just feel like, you know, the alchemist reminds me of the star card. So I do feel like you all have created and manifested a lot of this. Um, 2525, that's 77, 77 is 14, that's five. So I feel like you've created a lot of the changes that you may see in your life right now um, because you changed your minds. Like you remained hopeful, optimistic. You didn't turn into, you know, a Debbie Downer or, you know, a worry wart. Like you literally saw situations a certain way and you literally started to heal and transmute the negativity until your situation ultimately changed um you know yes it was bittersweet because it's like you came out of that dark night of the soul unscathed almost it's like yes you 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 walked away heartbroken or there were circumstances where you learned unfortunate truths about people that you cared about but ultimately like you also took your power back. You learned how to co-create with source. You discovered your true gifts and talents that you were healers, shamans, light workers, and this brought you into your power. You know, you discovered your passion. You know, there's, there's something erupting within you. Maybe there's someone in particular that has this strong passion, this strong desire. You know, maybe like I said, like with bittersweet, this is what you're urging, you know, yearning for is someone to, you know, bring this passion into your life. And that's what you could be like manifesting. You could be working on like some sort of love spells or, you know, doing like candle magic to call in, you know, a divine partner. Um, and like I always say, just as long as you're not messing with someone's free will, have at it, you know, but you know, when you start going against other people's free wills, that's, that's when you're teetering into the position of playing God and you don't want to ever get that confused. Um, we got Anthony Hamilton, the point of it all. I feel like you're learning the point of you going through whatever you went through with that karmic or with, um, within that relationship where you had some sort of soul tie with someone. It was all for you to come into your power. It was all for you to learn, um, healthier ways to exist in a relationship or to coexist in a relationship. Like you don't have to be, um, all in, you know, like it, it cannot be the end all be all of you. Like your relationship is, is important. Um, but it cannot be more important than your own needs, wants, and desires. It's like you're, 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 you got to prioritize. And I feel like for many of you, you were sacrificing, you were self-sabotaging, you were overcompensating and you weren't being, um, none of that was being reciprocated. And so you were taken for granted. And that's why you had to learn this tough lesson about loyalty, about love, about self-care, um, about respect. Um, you had to learn about independence you know, being able to independently stand on your own um, because that is the foundation of your overall success, happiness, and peace. So the, you had to learn the point of all of this. Um, going through the heartbreak and loss, I feel like you've discovered what that was. And, you know, ultimately realize, like, look, I create my realities. You know, I'm not a victim of anything. If anything, I am, you know, I am is what you realize, that I am the master um you know, 
and soul controller of my universe. So now you're working on reestablishing your foundation uh, because, you know, you were in a toxic relationship and that tower moment took place. So a lot of sudden um, endings, a lot of unexpected uh, events took place. So now it's like, you know, with this homecoming and this uh, foundation or homeland and foundation, it's like you had to do a lot of uh, root work. You had to go within to the root cause, you know, and this was about, you know, how you learned about love. You know, the point of it all is like realizing where a lot of the belief systems and ideologies came from, um, realizing that some of those things you were holding on to weren't serving your highest good. 29, 29, 11, 11. So, you know, now you can, you know, have a stronger foundation with someone who also has gone through that dark night of the soul journey. When you have that 1111 show up, that means that there's like a divine partnership, a counter, a divine, divine counterpart, the yang to your yin, yin to your yang is coming in. Somebody's awakening to the point of all of this, to the point of being in separation. Um, you had to learn a lot of these lessons in order to come into a healthy relationship, a healthy partnership. And with this, uh, beautiful card of awakening i feel like that's also speaking to you know awakening to you know your truth awakening to the fact that you are master manifestors that you can manifest whatever it is that you desire whatever it is that you require you can manifest all of that and so we have guardian on the bottom of the deck so you are divinely protected you have angels ancestors spirit guides you know the cats are very impervious to threat some of you may have a black cat like myself I feel like for many of you, you need to trust your intuition because the divine is giving you a lot of downloads. Like the divine gives you um, a lot of clarity, helps you to see things clearly, and you just have to trust your intuition. I feel for many of you, you know, this card, imagination, you're like um, focusing your intention to create this reality. In, in addition to like creating potions, elixirs, utilizing candle magic. So it's like you know you're powerful because we did see that witches had power. So it's like you know your power, so you're utilizing it. And we got raise it up. So it's like you're raising up the frequency, you know, the vibration of the collective. You know what I'm saying? I feel like somebody's also trying to invoke something negative in your life, but you have since blocked that negative energy out. Like you've turned your back on a lot of people who, you know, did a whole lot of gossiping. I feel this also, see this hex? Somebody's trying to raise some sort of hex. With this banish, see this? This this is people trying to cast some shit, throw some shit. Because you got hex and then you got rituals. So there's people who are throwing negativity your way like there's no tomorrow. They're trying to raise up some sort of um, blockages, delays, something negative in your life. And I feel like with this imagination... And air, it's like you're you're picking up on this. You're very sensitive. And I feel like, you know, Papa don't take no mess. Your your ancestors, see this? It's like, you know, there's there's this this Lord in the sky. You know, so it's like they they, they don't realize that you are the keeper of like ancient wisdom as well. You're the high priestess. You know, you are like someone very spiritual as well. So it's like whatever rituals, whatever hexes these individuals are casting upon you or attempting to it's like they're gonna fall by their own sword it's like the hole they're trying to dig for you they're gonna fall into it themselves that's just and and that's why you have this card of guardian because these are people that you are familiar with this is why i said they're secret competition because these are people that you may call family people you may have called your ex-lovers friends it's like but you you know cats like i said are impervious to threat so when you are impervious to threat it's because like i said they don't know how far in rank you are in the spirit realm so they're like they're shooting against you know an uh, uh, earth angel and with incubation in the back it's like you know whatever it is that they are trying to block because i do feel like these people are trying to block something from coming in for you you know because there's jealousy, there's envy. Um, but I feel like, you know, with this familiar, your angels are familiar with this this particular devil, this particular demon, this particular antic. And so they're telling you, they're giving you the downloads, telling you trust what you're feeling because 
Everybody that smiles in your face is not your friend. I feel like you got a fake, you got fake people around you. It's a lot of fakeness. It's a lot of fake shit going on. And they sit there smiling and beguiling, acting like they're so cool. Like they're so happy for you. You know, you got this beautiful spiritual union. So these are, you know, you're coming into a connection with somebody. And that's why you got this hex and ritual work. Because somebody's trying to block this from happening. This is what they're trying to block. But like I said, with this incubation and familiar and secret, it's like they don't know that you are the keeper of ancient wisdom as well. And that you are a master manifester. And whatever you're asking for, it's, it's, it's coming regardless. So they can't block what the divine has for you, you know, and with raise it up. I feel like with this card here, spiritual union, you're going to meet a like mind. You're going to meet someone very sensitive, very loving, very attentive, emotionally intelligent. Both of you are coming with your own cup of love. But what's going to really, you know, take this connection to the next level is the fact that you're going to have like, um, you know, similar interests. You know, remember, you have familiar and guardian. So it's like the divine is protecting you, protecting this union, because this is someone that you're going to feel this synergy, this connectivity with. And so with we have kindred soul and it says in this life together. So you and this person are separated. There is a separation, um, obviously. And this person is trying to find their way back to you. And we got stand your ground. So this is what you're doing. You're standing your ground. You're speaking your truth. Um, and I feel like your person is also doing the same. Um, but you've blocked out some folks. You definitely blocked some people out. And that's why they're trying to do these rituals and spells and trying to, you know, throw hexes at you. And you just have to be mindful to protect yourself. See this? We got rejoice and celebration just came out. So someone from your past could be somebody that you was working with. But I do feel like there's victories, breakthroughs. There's some sort of collaboration that's going to be successful. This is business partnerships. You know, this is like, you know, celebrating good times. You know, maybe there's a bonus pay, like I said. Maybe during the holy days, you're going to be with family. You're going to just sit down, eat, drink, and be merry. You know, and we have love under new management. Somebody from your past that you know could be past life or, or just a past person, uh, ex Co-worker, colleague, friend, somebody from your neighborhood that you grew up with because we did see that home, um, homeland and foundation. But there's a lot of love and laughter and cheer and, you know, so um, let's see what else we got. Let's see what else we have coming in. Why is this candles card here? So let's cut the deck. And I took this card because it flew out. So whenever they fly out, I choose them because I feel like they're choosing themselves. So we got awareness. So definitely magician. You are the magician. You are the magi. I magi nation. So that's what you are doing. You know, you are, you know, definitely in the power of um, creating your reality. So you are manifesting love. You're manifesting. You're using candle magic to bring in love. But you are aware, when you have awareness of who you are and the power that you possess, then you can harness it and utilize it in a way to manifest what you desire. And that's what you're doing. You know, when you're in the state of oneness, you have um, a lot of divine intervention, downloads, transmissions, and communication with spirit. So it's like you're very activated at this time. You are very activated. And there's choices you're going to have to make in regards to love because the song is called um, love under new management by Mickey Howard. So it says if, you know, there's, there's someone returning, but you're already going to be in some sort of spiritual union with another person. And this person that's, you're going to be in a spiritual union with is someone that you've manifested. Whereas the other person is someone that could be from your past. And so I feel like the divine is telling you, trust your intuition, choose well, go into meditation if necessary. You know, you see how he's like meditating to get it straight, contemplating, because there's several different directions you could go. And I feel like, you know, there's wish fulfillment here. So you have to choose wisely. Because one of them, like I said, is a wish that you have manifested. So you have to be, you know, use discernment. Be wise. You know, be aware. Not only self-aware, but aware of your environment. Like, pay attention to how people are moving. Because, like I said, you got some folks that are not happy. You know, they're just miserable. Misery loves company. So why is home kitchen here? Thank you, spirit. Wow. So look at this. 
and we have um, triumphant success. So whatever you are manifesting is going to absolutely lead to some sort of breakthrough, victory. Um, there's communication that could also lead to that as well. I feel like some of you all definitely are, um, you're creating some sort of atmosphere. I feel like by you doing your healing, by you healing at a soul level, by you going within, by you dealing with whatever um, whatever traumas you may have encountered in your childhood, in your life in general, uh, by you taking the time to heal yourselves, by you taking the time to like to rid yourself of all of that pain and trauma, um, it helped you to see things clearly. You know, it opened your eyes to the truth and it also cuts you free from the illusion. And that's what's leading to this triumphant success. That's what's leading to you being in love under new management because, you know, whatever was confining you, containing you, keeping you stuck and stagnant, it's like you healed yourself from that. You know, you had to let that go. You had to release that. You know, you had to cut it free. You had to cut that soul tie, that karmic cord. And that's why you're having this success because nothing is holding you back from living your truth any longer and now you have triumph so you're being more assertive someone is returning to you wanting to establish this solid foundation wanting to rebuild something that was destroyed because we got disruption which is the tower card so whatever this was that was destroyed it's as if somebody's thought somebody's negative thoughts somebody's negative ways you know disrupted this you know this could be like because uh, when I see disruption and then I see imagination, it's almost as if this is like self-deception. But because this is next to ritual um, invocation and hex banishment, I know there was like black magic. Somebody was taking away someone's free will, boxing them up, keeping them stuck and confined because they weren't using their intuition. So I'm in love under new management. So when you under new management, that's like you're under somebody else's um some some other contract, you know, is some other contractual agreement that you're under. But I feel this person wants to rush towards you. You know, maybe if they were intimidated by you in the past, they're coming at you with the intention to establish a real solid foundation. So that means they're coming to you with the truth. They're coming to you, uh, you know, they're coming to you ready and willing, you know, to invest. And they're coming quickly. You know, this is somebody who's like, you know, they have a very strong um, love and desire, you know, and this is someone with whom you may know, you know, maybe they were born in the seventh month on the seventh day um, of a month, regardless. Maybe this is somebody who has cancer in their chart. Um, I do feel like, you know, with this red flag, it's like they're waving this flag to, to like, make peace in a sense because maybe you picked up on some of their red flags which led to you know like i said this tower moment and led to you like ultimately leaving them behind but this person wants to explain it um because this is what came out after you know so it's like they're coming out of this you know they're breaking free i'm un in love under new management so it's like maybe somebody they was dealing with was you know like a, a witch a warlock you know they was dealing with somebody who was doing love spells on their ass and keeping them stuck and stagnant you know they found some shit that was like scary spooky to them but they was like they was under some sort of hex un under some sort of con control and i feel like maybe just thoughts you know, that you were, you know, you thinking of this person or this person constantly thinking of you is what kind of helped them break free um, from whatever was keeping them contained, confined, stuck. Um, we got Erica Badu soldier. So, yeah, this person had to be a soldier. They had to fight through this um, because this is like an ending. You know, their soul was, you know, disrupted. You know, their, their peace, you know, was disrupted. There was a lot um, that was happening to them. And it's because they, their free will is being taken away. But I do feel like with this soldier here, um, this person had to, to soldier through this. They had to pull themselves up from the bootstraps because with this truth, they realized the truth. They realized somebody was doing some sort of ritual work. They may have discovered something. It's like they walked in on someone and whoever this person was, it was like they're receiving karma because this is a scale. So I do feel like, you know, whoever's standing 
on, in, you know, it standing in their righteousness, being just in their actions is going to have some positive karma. Whereas those other individuals that was conducting these rich, these rituals and invoking some sort of negative energy, they're going to receive their karma as well. And it's 43, 43. So 17, I mean, seven, seven, 14 is five. So there's, there's going to be some sort of change. Um, I feel like this person made a change in what they wanted um, because now they see the truth, whereas they know now that there, you know, there, there was some illusion here. You know, they was being gaslighted. Something wasn't what it seemed to be. And there was more than one person. I feel like, as I said, rituals aren't just somebody casting spells. Maybe there was literal, like, people speaking untruth, saying things that were un, um, untrue. And now someone sees the truth about the group of people that they were dealing with, the group of unsavory ass folks that was, you know, doing hexes. So this is about banishing, banishment, and that's about like blocking out any negativity. And we have partnerships and alliances. So these are people that, you know, whoever they was in partnerships. These were like colleagues, family, friends, people that you invested in. You know, this could be the person that you're attracting also, their energy. But they're starting to look at this and see the truth of the matter. People that you was holding down, you know, people that you love, people that you was like being strong for, protective over. They, they was absolutely like jealous in secret competition, trying to hold you back. So why is hex banishment here for Scorpios? Why is hex banishment? Thank you, spirit. And this one wants to be expounded. Movement, choices, decisions. So there's going to be some movement. There has to be movement. There was too many cards, but I'm going to expound. So we got movement, so suffering in silence. We have patience and planning. Crown chakra. Passion ignited. Obstacles and challenges. Heartache and loss. So this is what I'm actually, you know, sensing. These individuals was trying to bring a lot of delays, blockages, see this? You know, you got people trying to trying to take away someone's joy and happiness, you know? That's miserable. They're trying to cause heartache and loss, make you feel trapped, you know, suffering in silence, trying to quiet your voice, you know, trying to isolate you to some degree. You know what I'm saying? And then there's this obstacle. So they're creating all of these blockages or tempting to, you know, but there's definitely someone trying to make their way to you. This looks like masculine feet. So it's like they're trying to come towards you. You're trying to go towards them. And, and we can see clearly that there's, you know, all this, these clouds. So it's like, you know, the clouds had to dissipate for you to see clearly. And I feel like with the staff here, remember that staff, somebody was holding on to that staff. And I felt like you, you, you were holding on to the staff, which is a very phallic symbol. So it's like you're still holding on to someone even through all of this. And this person is trying to make their way to you. You know, they're trying to soldier through whatever this, this toxicity is. And their angels and guides, their guardians are giving them, you know, lighting up this path to let them know what pitfalls lie before them. But there's a lot of heartache and loss. And this is all like, you know, mental anguish, confusion, entrapment, delusion. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, there's this aha moment. The crown chakra opening up. It's like, oh, I see what's going on. You've been waiting long time for the love. That's why I felt like somebody was growing impatient, feeling like, damn, when is it coming in? You know, there's a longing, a passion, you know, and I feel like not only for you, but somebody else is feeling that, you know, somebody else is feeling this passion. And that's what's bringing the two of you together. That's what's, you know, drawing this person to come towards you, you know, or to communicate this truth. Damn. See this? We got memories of love. So someone has memories of love. And then we have love begins. Then we have transformation, positive movements. And then we got mental conflict and trapped in fear. So we could definitely see you know, especially here, and we got Art Blakely and the Jazz Messengers, and this is called, it's, it's a long way down. Okay, so see this? So this person that was doing these spells, this is what they was causing. Um, they was causing someone to feel mentally conflicted, you know, defeated, trapped, 
This is ruminating, pining. This is not being able to even trust your own intuition. This is why uh, someone wasn't able to make moves. This is why they felt this energy of disruption. You know what I'm saying? But there's an end to this because this is eight and this is two. And there's an end to that because somebody discovered some sort of truth. Something was revealed to them. It's like the divine opened up a door and showed them what was going on. Showed that, that showed them that there was a ritual being done on them. That someone was invoking this negative energy and creating hexes and all kind of spells. But what we see here with these beautiful cards is someone is returning from your past. And we do see that somebody's rushing in. We also know that this is the same person that wants to be reunited. Their thoughts of you is what almost kept them alive. It's like it's what brought them to the realization that they need to come. You know, they need to get out of their head and stop thinking the worst and just like take that risk, take that chance, take a leap of faith. Because what I see here is, you know, something beautiful can develop. This is like I said, twin flame love. This is someone that you've manifested. The three and the six is abs. I mean, the three and the one is like, you know, the number four, which is 11, 11. And this is the six and the one, excuse me, so this is seven. So maybe the two of you are communicating um, telepathically, intuitively. Uh, maybe this person dreams of you. Uh, but I do see here with both of these cards, there's a lot of love. You have transformed, you know, through your transformation. I feel like it has helped, um, helped your person along in their process as well. Um, because you are very aware, very sensitive to information and you could have been very sensitive to the fact that someone was manipulating your energy and the person that is meant to be with you's energy. And that's how you were able to like break some sort of bondage or hex um, to create this positive movement forward with you and your person. I see there's like a greater, um, there's brighter days ahead, you know, and somebody does come out of that. See this emotional loss and then there's a the wish fulfillment. So it's like this person and you, you know, there's like this communication that's taking place. And I feel like, you know, because you had to heal yourself, you know, with emotional loss and that other card of like pain and agony and loss. And it was just like so much loss and pain. And it's because two people are longing for one another. And I feel like, you know, like I said, this wish fulfillment here, you know, it, it's coming in quickly, you know, somebody that you have been praying for, asking for, especially as this alchemist, this is the star card. It's like, it's coming in quickly. The divine has heard your prayers. The divine is saying, okay, I'm going to bring you exactly, you know, what you've asked for. And it's going to feel very familiar because it's exactly what you have prayed for and asked for. And I feel like, you know, because you are the keeper of ancient wisdom and knowledge, you're going to, you know, you're going to, um, like encourage someone to come out of this space, you know, and I do feel like, you know, somebody also, you know, looks at this connection as something that could heal them, you know, help them feel, um, that sense of renewal. All right. So let's see what else we got. We're going to pick up some messages here and let's do it. I'm, I'm hearing to do the dark, um, Grimoire. Get some energy of this person. See what we got coming in. Bottom of the deck, we got the Queen of Swords. So this is always Scorpionic energy when they transform into that I don't give a fuck mentality. And then we have the Knave of Wands. So yeah, you cut off this little playboy, this little childish ass energy. You know, they thought they were smart. They was playing a lot of games. You know, people who just like sitting around trying to gaslight. We got the Six of Wands here. See this? So this is what you was dealing with, somebody who's like, you know, a salesman trying to sell you some shit that wasn't, you know, because look at this face. This is like a demon trying to, you know, convince you to, to do something, to give up your free liberty. And I feel like, you know, someone's intuition had to kick in. Maybe they saw something for what it was. Look at this mental conflict, confusion. It's almost like they're seeing themselves for the first time and realize like they are the reason why they was trapped. Because they, you know, allowed an energy vampire to, um, to step in. And with this high priestess, I feel like you, you know, are the ancient, you know, you are very ancient, um, and you're very wise and you're very cerebral, you know, and this chariot, now this chariot is coming, you know, and feel it and sense it and can taste it. You know that they're coming. 
you could feel their presence approaching you. You know, you could feel it. And this is something that you've manifested. So this card is still here. There's two cards still here. So I'm going to take these. So the high priestess. So the high priestess is here. So definitely um, there is rewards. I feel um, there's celebrations. I feel like, you know, there's a reuniting, you know, of, of energy. Like you're going to be reuniting with someone. Maybe this is somebody you used to work with or live near or uh, somebody you, you know, you have history with. And I feel like they're reuniting. They're coming back. You can feel it. They communicate with you a lot um, telepathically. You're very sensitive. You're picking up this person's energy strongly. Next, we have the chariot. See this? The chariot came out twice. So this is someone you you manifested because we got, or maybe they're manifesting you because we got awareness and then the chariot. So there's like some sort of positive movement forward. This is like a yes answer. So it's like whatever rituals, candle magic you was doing, it's like the divine is, is, is absolutely saying, okay, and so it is, so mote it be. But it's like, and you're aware that they're coming. You could, you could hear the stampede of the horses, you know, on this chariot. You know, and I feel like this is like the yang to your yin, yin to your yang, because as I said, you're going to feel this sense of familiarity, and this is because someone, you manifested, you know, you've manifested this person. We got the hierophant, so there absolutely is going to be some sort of marriage. You know, this is going to be like a commitment, someone you're going to grow old with, live with, they're going to communicate how they feel, and this is all you've asked for, and so we have death, see this? So there's a death of something, you know, the death of something brought you into, you know, your, your gifts, you know, the endings, you know, going through a rough cycle, going through a tough time, you know, has brought you to transparency, truth, clarity, illumination, you know, has brought you to, you know, the realization that things have to be cut out that don't serve you. But the death card is all about transformative energies, which we see right here. So transforming, going through enormous change, evolving, you know, this is about self mastery, growing, you know, and, and there was a death of a relationship, you know, a connection that was that led to all this heartache and loss and memories of loss and emotional loss. And it's just like you went through something very traumatic and painful, but you had to heal from that. You know, you had to heal from that ending, that painful ending. And it caused you um, it led you to like healing your childhood traumas and, you know, familial traumas, which is now what's giving you clarity, what's helping you to like, you know, release certain belief systems, you know, that weren't serving you, you know? And so with this death card, um, that's like a graduation card. That's your energy, your power. Uh, and the um, knave of swords is here. So this is like, you know, communication rushing in, you know, somebody, you know, somebody you have, like I said, planted seeds and roots with wanting to express something, wanting to get something off their chest. Maybe there's an apology or maybe there's some clarity. Maybe somebody feels, um, you know, like they're, they're, they're ready now to speak the truth, to say what it is they want. They want to establish a solid foundation. They want to ground the connection. So we have um, the Queen of Pentacles. What did I say? This person wants to ground the connection. This person definitely sees you as like, you know, a healer, very nurturing, very loving, whether you're maternal or paternal. Like this is someone who definitely knows they can plant seeds and roots and build a family nucleus with you. You know, have that happy house, happy spouse, happily ever after, building a legacy, building a family, you know, growing you know, a business together, you know, investing, collaborating, um, being willing to compromise. This person sees you as someone who's very stable. They see your worth. They see your value. Um, this is someone who sees you as very domestic, very practical, very, you know, someone very regal and royal. Um, and that's what attracts them most is that you have this sense of stability, this sense of self-confidence. Um, and we have the strength card. So it's, it's, it's like requiring somebody is like really being strong. They're facing their demons, facing their fears. You know, there was a point in time when they ran from it, but I feel like they had some sort of epiphany. You know, there was a, a light bulb moment with this imagination. It's like they went through the darkest times and something finally came to light. And it's like they had to be strong. You know, when you lean on, you know, when you have nothing to lean on but your strength, 
um, that speaks to how strong you actually are. And I feel like this person really learned um, how strong they were because they had nothing more to lean on um, but their strength. They had the, nothing but their strength to lean on, rather. And so now, this is why with this hex, you know, the love, I feel, is what's um, breaking someone free, you know, from some sort of hex. It's like this, this memories of love, holding on to love. It's like they have not let this go. And you can see this candle. She's holding this candle and it's lighting, you know, up the path to see this monster. So it's like the passion that, you know, this feminine energy is, is, is holding and carrying for someone, you know, the candle magic. This is what has, you know, given someone the strength they needed, you know, to, to get break free from some sort of karmic, to break free from some sort of connection that was unhealthy. And we see here the hermit. So someone has been really like, you know, stuck and trapped, you know, trying to figure out why am I just hold up? Why don't I just go out there and go after what I want? And it's because they ha had someone like, you know, doing some rituals to block them, you know, to block their creativity, to block them from taking action. You know, maybe someone uh, took some time away, you know, to, to work on themselves. And this is, you know, through the soul searching and doing those deep dives, internal and, you know, reflective work, they, they realized the truth. You know, they realized they had to use head over heart in a situation. And this is what led to them realizing there was some sort of rituals, you know, some sort of spells being casted upon them. Somebody manipulating their energy, you know, someone taking away their free will. This is someone that is using magic, you know. Look at this, the magician along with the um, banishment hex card. So someone absolutely discovered something. Um, and this is like what was leading to someone being mentally conflicted, feeling confined, trapped, stuck. This is exactly what happens when you have someone doing this, doing a hex. This is a magician that takes away your free will. And not only do they take away your free will, but they cause psychic attacks. This is a psychic attack. This is someone making someone feel doubt, fear, ashamed, agony, this is someone ruminating, pining over problems, issues. You know, worry is paying issue is paying interest on problems that may never come. And this person is just they just like all they have a lack mentality, scarcity mindset. This is someone feared, you know, fearful, you know, of life. Like you you know, just afraid of everything. You know, and it's because of this nasty energy that's manipulating and doing spells and witchcraft. And the beautiful thing about this is that there's breakthroughs with these cards because what we have after those cards is we see that there's a transformation, which means someone completely breaks free from that and transforms uh, not only their situation, but they transform from this scarcity mindset to thinking more optimistically. And I know that because there's positive movement forward. You know, and there's positive movement forward. Why? Because they're remembering love. They're remembering what love feels like. They're holding on to that love. There's candles here. Remember the candles that you are lighting, your candle magic. This person is also, you know, utilizing those candles to also break free. And right now we have Orange Moon by Erica Badu. So there is a lot of, um, I feel, intuition, like messages audiently or telepathically and this love this is the ace of cups so love begins so you gotta like you gotta heal from this toxic shit that's about healing first and foremost but then when you heal yourself you begin to love yourself and when you love yourself now you can attract love to come to you but somebody was absolutely manipulating this energy and look at this the ten of wands this is someone releasing the burden finally escaping the entrapment this is the masculine, what they're going through, feminines. They're having to escape some sort of hex, black magic. Somebody threw some shit on them. And the orange moon, orange is the sacral chakra. So that's about, you know, creativity. That's about attraction and love and strength. And so someone has to, like, pull on their strength to fight to get out of this very toxic connection. You see this? And this is keeps climbing out of the mouth. 
you know, so somebody's lies, somebody's like deception, you know, this ritual invocation, all these people was like taking away this person's free will. So somebody could have been doing like, you know, like I said, ma magic, some sort of magic, or maybe they was going to practitioners, psychics to work on this masculine, but look, he's unburdening himself. He's pulling himself out of this pit. You know, this is somebody's mouth full of bullshit, Judas energy, freeing themselves up. And then you got the six of wands. So yeah, they're, 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 this is the six of wands and the 10 of wands, which makes the seven of wands. So the six and this 10, you know, is definitely going to um, result in this person setting boundaries, you know, because that six of wands with the one of wands uh, definitely is like, you know, now you're standing your ground. Remember we saw stand your ground. So somebody's going to be standing their ground and they're going to speak up for what they believe in. And that's what's leading to the positive you know, movement forward. And then we have the three of wands here. So there's definitely like manifestations um, that are coming in, but it's like, you gotta, you know, you gotta plan, prepare, you know, that three of wands reminds me of like the um, ready, set, go, you know, it's like ready, set, go. Cause you're, you're planning, you're strategizing, and then you take action. Once you feel like you're, um, you got some good footing. And so I do feel like that's, you know, that energy of, um, you know, Scorpio right now is like, you know, you're encouraging this, I feel, because you're already in your power. You already dealt with some old, some old toxic, toxic um, past or toxic um, ex. And I feel like whoever you're attracting, whether this is someone you are familiar with that you may have worked with before, lived around, an old friend, um, an old, you know, whatever, acquaintance, or if this is a past life love or someone you've never met, but you're going to feel like you've known them. This person is going through their dark night of the soul. They're doing their shadow work now. And I feel like they had um, a karmic. They had someone doing ritual spell work, um, throwing hexes on them, which was blocking and delaying this connection from coming into fruition. And I see that you all are going to receive some sort of promotion pay increase. Um, you're making business deals. Remember, you had this pentacles respect card. So I feel like, you know, you, you're... you're absolutely going to have the respect of your your colleagues there's definitely someone you know who's dealing with mixed signals games you know just toxic energy maybe that's why uh someone is stuck is because you know maybe they felt like they were being played they felt like somebody was you know affecting their um you know their free will like they was taking away their free will you know but you're seen as the star you're seen as someone very vibrant you're attracting this emotionally intelligent individual, somebody that's on your frequency and wavelength, you know? And I feel like this is someone that's going to be like your family. My cards are all jacked up, all jacked up because they fell right before the reading. So we got the Trinity. So this will be like your family. I do feel like this will be someone in your family tree. Who is this right now? Tiana Taylor. It says, let's build. So yeah, you'll be building with someone. You'll be building you know, with this person, this foundation, this is, you, you want to establish a solid foundation to build on. And this person is coming in very confident, assertive, very sure, very balanced. And, and they're attracted to you and they want to build. Chemistry is real. See that? This person is coming in. The chemistry is real. You're going to feel the chemistry being real. And this is what's leading to this, like, you know, celebratory moment, just rejoicing. I feel like you're you, you're very respected financially. This person sees you as very beautiful. They want to build with you, you know, because they do see you as someone who's like very domestic, very resourceful, very um, loving, nurturing. You're a healer. You're a leader. Like you make things happen. You're very, you know, regal and royal. You know, you have a very strong spiritual sense. And these are things that are trapped, you know, divine masculines, divine feminines. Look at this. You will be the first millionaire in your family. It is written. And you know why? Because you're manifesting something. You know, whatever you're working on, it's like leading to major success. And it's like you've manifested this. You know, you've been calling in your your um, your financial blessings. You've been calling in assistance with some of your business ideas. And it's like... The divine is assuring you this is like the third or fourth time this card has come out for Scorpios. I feel like you was dealing with a lot of games, toy, you know, boyish energy. And you put, you know, there was the death to that. 
you know, somebody who was just sitting around like playing games, you know, gaslighting you, mind fucking you, you betrayed, you was betrayed one last time because that's when you finalized that situation and moved away from it. You ended it with the death card. That was a very painful ending. You see that you went and suffered emotional loss. There was sudden, um, you know, sudden loss, you know, that you was feeling as well because it happened unexpectedly. But I also feel like you transmuted that pain, that hurt, you know, into something powerful. You know, you co-created with Source. And I feel like that's another reason why you're being met with some sort of um, abundance, some sort of stability, some sort of success. See, what did I say about karma? So you're receiving good karma. And I feel like whoever is going through, um, you know, whatever it is that they're going through, they're also um, going to receive good karma because I feel like their free will is being taken away. It says, um, you know, you reap what you sow, sowing in good faith. So for you all, you know, you worked hard after some sort of tower moment, after someone just completely disrupted your peace. You know, it's like the tower destroys the empire you're attempting to build. But I feel like, you know, you, you regained balance. You restored the balance. Um, you paid attention to what the divine was telling you to go after. You know, you trusted your intuition and you used discernment and you focused on the self. You rebuilt your foundation. You know, you rebuilt your castle um, and you established a sense of independence this time around opposed to being codependent. And I feel like by you focusing on yourself and mastering your crafts, that's leading to you having some sort of stability. The bottom of the deck, see that? Laws of attraction manifesting your dreams, hopes, and desires. So your vibration is now pulling what you want to you that's what you know um manifesting is really it's like when you get so powerful in your craft you just you just think it you know as you think if you create and um that's what makes it a very metaphysical act and so with this you know imagination you know if somebody was really like stuck on stupid we got baby face never keeping secrets playing so somebody was literally like stuck because they gave their attention to someone, something that was disrupting their peace, disrupting their free will, keeping them bound, stuck. I feel with this air energy, imagination, I feel like for you all, Scorpios, um, you, you breathe, you like, you sent strength, you know what I'm saying, to this person who required it. This person was keeping secrets from you about another love, but that other love exposed themselves because you knew that there was some sort of spell work that was being done. It's like whatever's hidden in the dark, it comes out in the light. And I feel like for many of you all with the air, it's like you was receiving downloads during full moon cycles. Um, you were receiving downloads maybe via your dreams. Maybe some of y'all was getting like certain animal totems that would visit you and you would look up the meaning and it would mean that there was someone like, you know, trying to you know, send attacks, psychic attacks or whatever. But whoever you are, are attracting um, with this tower, uh, there's this enormous change that's taking place and someone is trusting um, in their own ability to stand their ground. Um, we got King's Queen's disease and it says gluttony. So somebody was dealing with someone who was gluttonous, um, somebody who was only using them for uh, security purposes, um, you know, trying to keep someone around just so they could pay the bills and keep their lives, you know, comfortable. Meanwhile, this person felt like they was in a prison, you know, never keeping secrets. This person could have been secretly feeling this way. You know, this is like self-deception, just settling, you know, but meanwhile, their imagination is running wild. They're imagining themselves free, imagining themselves elsewhere. And so this person with never keep a secrets, it's like they couldn't lie anymore. They felt you know, they felt restricted, you know what I'm saying? And they felt like somebody was just using them. So they had to stand up to like some sort of bully. They had to stand up to this, this monster, you know, they had to stand in their power, not back down again from that type of energy because that shit was like literally controlling them. And so now we have selfish loving myself, me, myself, and I, and enjoying getting to know me better. So this is what this person has to do. They have to break free, you know, this number six of wands. That's like, you know, victory. That's like, um, finally seeing the truth, but they're seeing the truth because they're finally, they're finally, finally, finally asking for the truth. They took the time out, you know, they took the necessary time out to assess their situation. 
you know, so this is the hermit here and the hermit is soul searching, you know, all the answers you seek are found within the hermit is like a wizard. So he's going within to find the truth and the truth is here. So now someone sees like, damn, I've been overburdened, you know, and I've been secretly living in this prison, living in a way where I'm unhappy, you know, where I feel like, you know, I'm taking on the burdens of everyone else and I'm unfulfilled. So this 10 of wands will become the ace of wands and someone will have some sort of passionate new start, but they will also realize, um, you know, the truth of, you know, why they felt confined. They're going to take their power back and they're no longer going to invest in anyone else but themselves. This is about you know, healing thyself, you know, loving thyself, prioritizing your own needs, wants, and desires. Someone's trying to sell them some meal tickets, like, you know, literally like, hey, well, you know, if you stay longer, we could do this and that. And this person is just like, no, nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do me. You do you. Um, right now we have Olive and this is called Safer Hands. So yeah, this person is going to put their selves, like their happiness into their own hands because they didn't feel safe you know, with this past person, this karmic that was doing these rituals that was trying to take away their free liberty. This right here shows, you know, they're trying to hand them something and he's, his hands are down. You see, he's not, he's not even reaching to receive it because he knows that this is like somebody selling him, um, some sort of illusion again. And so he's like safer hands. It's like, I'll keep my distance. You do what you do. I'm going to do what I do. So with four page letter, there's someone's coming into some sort of epiphany now. Um, you know, they've been feeling like a lot of pain, a lot of loss, agony, ruminating, pining over, you know, being in separation. Um, someone wants to apologize, especially with the never keep a secret song by Babyface. Maybe somebody, um, Definitely was being, you know, immature and childish, um, which led them into this like, you know, incubus succubus kind of relationship, you know, and now they see, uh, you know, that they created this, this, this mess for themselves because they didn't um, choose wisely. Remember, we had choose wisely. And so they could have chose this person over you if this is someone that you know from your past or even if this is a past um, you know, life situation. Um, obviously there was, you know, this generational curse spell hex that needed to be broken free in order for someone to, to have the clarity they need. Um, but I feel like now somebody sees clearly, uh, how they feel, you know, and what they feel is this great sense of love. Um, they feel this, this desire to return because we have the six of, um, cups. This reminds me of the six of cups. So this is like, you know, having an affinity towards someone and wanting to move positively towards that person. Um, because now they have this sense of clarity and truth, but someone is like literally, uh, penning letters and you can see this magician here. He's like penning a letter, um, in the wee hours of the night. Um, so it's like, it says a uh, four page letter. These are my thoughts. Should I send it? Text, delete, text, delete. So it's like, they're having difficulty sending this letter because they know that they, you know, created a whole whirlwind of problems, uh, by their decisions. Uh, maybe these were family, you know, this was a family situation that someone felt that they needed to, you know, they needed to really try to work towards because they invested a lot. They, you know, planted seeds with someone. So they wanted to see if this connection could actually work. Maybe this is someone who feels like you are, you know, better suited to be their counterpart, their divine feminine or their, or their divine masculine. And this is something they want to express to you. This is something they would like um, to build towards with you. Um, and then we have, I don't fuck with you. So somebody definitely broke free from some sort of family dynamic. They was in a marriage or some sort of partnership and they realized that somebody was taking away their free will. And so now this is like, you know, with the, uh, the four page letter, um, maybe somebody's picking up on the fact that somebody has their guard up. Um, they've created some sort of healthy boundaries. And so they're a little, um, unsure of how to approach this situation. There's no denying that there's a strong physical attraction, a strong desire. Um, and that's what I'm seeing here. Let me get a couple more messages. All right, so this is a bonus. So we have the Seven of Swords. See that? It's deception. So someone being, you know, deceived. But this, this lion is very wise. 
And so it's not going to take them a long time to discover that, you know, and look at these four people up here. See that? And this is the, the four people invoking some shit. So there's four people that's very significant in painting this illusion and trying to trick this lion. Because remember, the lion is uh, strength. That's the strength card in traditional tarot. So it's like whoever this person was, they're finally seeing, you know, who these individuals were that was like um, disrupting their peace, you know, trying to control them, their money. It was like out of greed, you know, so maybe this is even a job circumstance or situation, you know, but this is like a bonus message. So I'm going to put that where it belongs because I see that there, there was definitely some, the one who was, um, you know, who was betrayed. But they see the light. They got the clarity. And they're going after what they want. You know, This is somebody who absolutely has seen the light. There's like uh, this epiphany, this aha. There's a new beginning, a new start that someone wants to make. This Eight of Cups is showing me that you know there was a decision to walk away from something that was emotionally um, leaving this individual feeling bankrupt. Um, and I feel like they finally stood up for themselves. They finally spoke their truth. You know, they finally are standing up at their podium and expressing themselves, using their throat chakra to say how they feel. Because we could see here clearly somebody was like, their free will is being taken away. They couldn't speak. They couldn't move. They couldn't feel. They couldn't express themselves. They were fearful. There was like just a worry wart. And it's because somebody was invoking some shit on them. And this is the start of your ending by Mob Deep. So yeah, somebody was definitely like, you know, trying to block someone's blessings, trying to block someone from having a new start, from having a new um, new voyage, a new journey. And they have to cut that energy off because it didn't mean them well. So look at this. We got the uh, Four of Cups. So yeah, someone absolutely wants to return. And I feel like this person wants to return because they feel sick. You know, they feel, you know, they, 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 they with this sick, person and that with the they're touching the head I feel like they absolutely are sick in the head they were sick in the head they were being um confused they was being duped they was being gaslighted because this is the same energy here trapped in fear and mental conflict so this is like you know being in a defeatist state and not understanding why and it's because you have these individuals who are super miserable, have nothing better to do in life but to fuck with other people, you know, to fuck with people and their journey. It's like get your fucking life together and leave people to fuck alone. And this is what they was doing, competition, secret competition, you know, not realizing that the the deeds they do going to come back to them. It's like you, motherfuckers don't know how high in rank you are in the spirit realm. To be throwing some shit at you. And even if they're thrown at somebody that is associated with someone who's in a higher rank, that's still like throwing it at you. That's why it's like you got to be mindful of who you align yourself with. That's why they say you're guilty by association. Because when you fuck with people that are this malicious, this calculating, this evil spirited, then you you it's almost like you deserve what comes with that energy because like you got to be sensitive to energy you can't just be around any type of people you know what i'm saying that's how so many people get caught up in the rapture is just by aligning themselves not having no dignity no self-respect that's why the divine was like yo stand up for what you believe in stand in your power stand your ground because that requires you know some some respect put some respect on your fucking name you know what i'm saying this this is what this person starts to see like yo let me demand my respect. Let me let me start standing erect. I'm not going to just back down to somebody's fucking bullshit spells and just, you know, sit there and die under the spell. I just watched the other day Skeleton Key. You know what I'm saying? And you have motherfuckers that will do that. Well, the, the, the old lady that made her husband or whoever the hell that was. I couldn't even watch the whole movie because I was busy. But it was like the parts that I did see. It was like she literally turned him into a mute. He couldn't move. He couldn't speak. And that's what these people do. They, they will fuck with somebody because they're so miserable and so low vibrational and can't just get a man or a woman on their own, you know, beautiful personality and characteristics. They, they got to go in and, and force somebody to be with they fucking trifling asses. They got to take away somebody's free will to be in a relationship. 
And there's a catch-22. We got Guapoli, catch-22. And the catch-22 is that the universe sees all. And, you know, you, you can't, you know, it don't take a whole day to recognize sunshine. And so with this Ace of Cups here, this is the great healing that took place. This is the awareness that first heal thyself and then I become a great healer. So you become aware of your power, your healing abilities. Um, and this puts you in emotional equilibrium. The Ace of Cups has literally come out twice. So you're absolutely manifesting like twin flame, counterpart, yin yang, divine connection. Because there's a beautiful love connection that can develop. And it's because you believed in your ability to manifest that shit. You've utilized magic. You've utilized your own intention, setting your intention. And not only will you have love, but you're going to have wish fulfillment. You're going to have great opportunities present themselves. You're going to have money. You're going to have money, honey. And you, there's going to be like... You know, it's because things are balanced. It's because you've taken the reins and the control of your life. It's like where you now see yourself is where you're directing, you know what I'm saying, this chariot to go. And these eight of wands, this eight of wands is showing like movement, you know, this, this incoming movement. Like somebody is rushing in and they're going to express something to you. There's communication coming in and somebody is, you know, really, you know, the person with the mixed signals, they was mixed signals because they had somebody manipulating their energy. They had to cut that shit off. They had to dead that relationship. They had to see the truth of the matter, the light, you know what I'm saying? Cause this is triumphant success. So they had to cut free from that karmic, you know, and this is because of the work you was doing. Like you was on the side, you know, doing your, doing your beautiful uh, magic that you do Scorpios, like, you know, where you're not taking away someone's free liberty, but just cleansing and clearing the energy. And that's what led to somebody to make this decision. Now you're just naturally attracting shit to you. You know, the three of wands, you know, if you look here, this person's rushing in on this chariot and, you know, this is exactly what this person is doing right next to it, rushing in on the chariot. So you're like manifesting. So this is like literally when you change your mind, you change your reality. If you look at yourself as a victim, you'll be the victim. If you look at yourself as, you know, the victor, then you will be the victor. But it's like you're manifesting somebody back into your life who may have ghosted you, who may have put you on pause or who may have simply just like breadcrumbed you along with these gaslighting tactics where they was just making you feel like you were unimportant. But now it's like they have this epiphany. They have that aha moment. That sun is shining. Like, yo, Scorpio's actually my person. You know, this person is like, yo, I felt happiest when I was around Scorpio. They just made me feel like a child again. Like they made me feel them butterflies you know what I'm saying? And we got Guapoli catch 22. So there was a catch 22. They may have chose somebody else, but now the catch 22 is that they feel like you, the, their twin flame, their soulmate, because that 22 is 11, 11, you know what I'm saying? So they feel like with you, they can have stability with you. They could est establish, you know, a more strong foundation. This could be, like I said, somebody that you grew up with, somebody that's from, you know, your, um, you know, your hometown, this could be somebody that could be at a distance even, but they know with you, if they come towards you, you know, that you're like, you know, this is like positive karma. This is marriage. Um, this is the two of wands. So they were stuck at a fork in the road. And I feel like that's why they received some sort of karma because they ended up with a karmic, you know what I'm saying? They ended up with somebody that was definitely, um, causing confusion. This person screaming and yelling. It was with somebody that was like, almost like a bull in a China closet, you know, just like all over the place. And now they are taking lead, taking control, being assertive, going after what they want. And this is why now things are feeling more grounded, more balanced, more in harmony, more in alignment for them. Because now it's like they're not going against the grain. It's like they couldn't s silence their mind. Like the mind was always telling them, you know, maybe they had to heal some sort of childhood um, issues or heal the child within in order to establish um, some sort of boundaries. You know, maybe they felt like they, you know, maybe they had a child with someone and they was trying to do the right thing, but they just didn't feel um, like that's what they really wanted or where they wanted to be. And so it's like this, this was, you know, kind of like 
pulling and tugging at them, you know, in, at their consciousness. It was like a whirlwind of problems. But we see here with the Six of Wands, this is what they truly want. They want a victory with you. You know, they want success with you, you know, because they see that you are, you know, you're regal, you're royal, you're having, you know, you're winning. You know what I'm saying? And somebody definitely was trying to live vicariously through another person. We got one love. This person only has one love, and I feel like it's you, Scorpios, where they was denying this. They was trying to deny this. They was keeping secrets. They was lying to themselves, you know? This is self-deception. This is delusion, you know? And, and I feel like, you know, this clarity, this moment of clarity, this aha, this epiphany, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, when you are highly intuitive, and you're tapped into your energy, then you naturally will, you know, you will activate and charge um, your person, you know? And I feel like you you triggered them in a way where they realize like they could have the victory with you. They could have a breakthrough. I feel like they're, you sent them some positive charge, some positive energy, you know, that love that they needed, you know, that love that was required. See this, the six of swords. So this is like moving away, moving on. And I chose that because it was sticking out. Um, I'm going to put these back and I'm going to put this back because it didn't pop out. I was supposed to just expound. So why is um, imagination? Thank you, Spirit. See this? What did I say? You sent the energy. You're the divine feminine. This is the empress. So you sent that energy. You're responsible for healing this person. And not only are you responsible, this is a divine union. Look at this. This ancestor is overseeing this union, this connection. This is happy house, happy spouse, happy family. This is building a legacy rooted in your heritage, you know, building, you know, a solid foundation for your family. This is stability, security, emotional fulfillment, elation. This person knows they could have this with you. They know they could have this. They see you as their divine partner. They're very attracted to you, you know. And with this king's, queen's disease, gluttony, power, hungry, um, I definitely feel someone had somebody that was absolutely trying to um, hold on to them because they felt like with them they would have stability, they would have security. This person is realizing you're the one they want. This Ten of Swords, they was backstabbed, betrayed. They was done dirty. You know, this is an energy of somebody who was deceived, you know. Just finding out the truth that someone's putting spell work. Someone's taking away your free will. Someone's being deceptive, lying, speaking with a forked tongue. And having to climb out of that hole. You know what I'm saying? Like literally climbing out of a hole because of lies. There was a bunch of lies, gaslighting. This is the Hierophant. So someone sought wise counsel. Because remember, we had the tarot cards. Maybe somebody went to some sort of tarot card reader and the truth came out in the cards. Or maybe somebody went to, you know, some sort of channeler or psychic and they realized the truth. The truth was exposed about spell work and ritual work. This is what somebody realized and that shit hurt them to the core. Because this is somebody who's like, literally, they, they tried to help this person. You know, only to find that person was doing um, something to harm them. You know, they was doing something to harm them. And so now they, they pulled themselves out of that rut. They unburdened themselves. They're going to take that wand. You know, they may have taken some time away to assess the situation because this was a decision they chose. Now they're just loving themselves, being single, you know, enjoying their singlehood. This could be your energy, Scorpio, but I feel like y'all are past all of this. This is somebody new, but you could have people still doing this, still working these rituals and shit. But this is seeking wise counsel, getting downloads. You know, this Hierophant, this is like... Someone very wise, very spiritual. So this person could be very, because uh, you came out as the high priestess and now your person's coming out as the high priest, the hierophant. So this person is just as spiritual as you. And maybe, as I said, you've activated or triggered something within them. Um, and we have the five of cups here on the bottom of the deck. So there's definitely like a longing, a yearning, ruminating, pining up in your head, regretting, you know, feeling shame and remorse. Why is Hex here? This could be the person that was doing this Hex. In the, and they're only ashamed because somebody has discovered or found out they was doing this shit. See this? Look, the Ace of Wands. There's a new beginning. 
Somebody is leaving the past. They're releasing the past, releasing the old, and going towards the new. You got the Ace of Cups, and then you have the Ace of Wands, and then the sun is right here on the bottom of the deck. So there is absolutely a brand new day. There's like somebody is going to come in with the intention to bring love. And I feel like this is a divine counterpart, a divine connection. This is somebody you will feel the sense of familiarity with. This is someone that makes you feel happy, you know, warm, tingly inside, elated, you know, optimistic about your future, happy. You know, this is beautiful energy. This is two of you, you know, pouring equally into one another, you know, really willing to invest. And this can lead to marriage commitment because the Hierophant definitely will uh, commit. Maybe this is, again, you know, uh, someone that you may have some differences with. But as this divine feminine and the Ten of Pentacles, like, you are very successful. This person sees you, like I said, as regal and royal and you're worth the fight. You know, this person is literally fighting for their lives. I feel like they're fighting for this relationship, like, wholeheartedly wholeheartedly Scorpios whoever this person is they're fighting for their lives they're fighting to come back into union to have this connection I feel like you remind them of love you remind them of what makes them feel this joy this happiness you know whatever they've been confined and stuck in it's like it sucked the life out of life for them and so now it's like they want this triumphant success and they're coming towards you like they're speeding your way. And I feel like, you know, you're sensitive. You know, both of y'all are like manifesting one another. You know what I'm saying? And I feel strongly you already know who this person is. I feel like you've met this person in this lifetime. Um, even if it's someone you may have lost contact with through the years, it's like this is the one you always felt that got away. You know, and they're connected and attached, I feel, to someone very toxic. Even if this is not them who's attracting that energy, I feel like y'all got some folks that are very jealous, you know, very jealous of your power, very jealous of your success, very jealous of your happiness and your peace, you know, because they lack it. It's like that misery love company scenario. It literally feels just like that. Like you seem to be very happy. You seem to be very content, and this bothers people. It's like your high vibration, um, it aggravates somebody's demons. You know, it really irritates their demons. And, and I feel like, you know, the more you work on yourself, the more you will help whoever your person is um, leave their toxic situation. Because there is mirroring. We know how that rolls. But Scorpios, this is your reading. I hope it resonated. If it did, please be kind, hit the like, share, subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell notification so that you know whenever I upload. I know whenever YouTube does updates, it's like it takes away uh, some of your subscribers. It unsubscribes, rather, um, some of the folks, you know. Um, so just double check that. Make sure you still subscribe to the channel. Um, if you are new again, I hope you stay a while. If you are returning, you already know what it is, beloveds. Love is love is love. Thank you so much for tuning in and tapping in. Until next time, Ashe.